There must be a better way. <laughs> ah! <laughs> was that stupid? Yeah, that was kind of stupid. <laughs> was that pretty like, dumb? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we'll cut it. I don't know. All right, guys. So, my idea for the video here is uh, I got this uh, titanium pry bar. My wife got it for me back uh, a couple months ago. I love it. It's nice. Uh, it's very strong, but it doesn't have a lot of the functions. Well, not a lot of them. It doesn't have a couple of the functions I'd like. I'd prefer if this one had a little uh, nail puller. Why is that not drawing? Okay. A little nail puller notch there. And also, preferably a bottle opener, okay? And it doesn't have... What's this mother? Marker doesn't want to watch or work. Um, it doesn't have a bottle opener on it, which I thought would be nice. And this angle right here is a little bit fatter uh, than I would prefer. I'd prefer something that's a little bit more of like shim shaped. Uh, so back before my wife got this for me, I got this uh, little Stanley 55045, uh, which is mostly just used by contractors for uh, which what I have always used them for, for like trim work and stuff in houses. Um, and I thought, I always thought this would be a great pry bar because you could just, you know, trim it down here. You can see I already made the markings on here. Uh, with, you know, just round this off here, put a little bottle, not, uh, and I'm not sure if I'm going to, this, this is optional here, not sure if I'm going to do it, but either way, uh, also going to, again, just like I would have done on that other titanium one, take in a little bit more off this, make it a little bit more aggressive an angle. That way you can use it as a cutter if you need to, and also you can use it as a scraper if you need to, and it's just a little bit nicer, but... I also want to straighten this out a little bit, you know, more. Uh, maybe heat that up there and kind of bang it flat on the anvil. Um, but either way, I'm going to then go ahead and make a, a little pocket slip for it uh, made out of leather. So that it's a little bit uh, safer for the pocket. If I want to sharpen that down, it's not going to do well in the pocket. So before we do that, we need to uh, pr practice or figure out exactly what we're going to use for a uh, paint method because I do not want to put this in my pocket like this. We might end up doing it that way, but I don't think so. I, I have a couple ideas for painting it. So before we get into the actual project of cutting this up, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we can do for that. All right. So here we have uh, some painting methods for the project that we do not end up using. I ended up leaving them in here just because I think that that's pretty cool. Um, methods. I'm sure that you guys have probably heard of hydro dipping before. This was my first time ever trying it and I thought it turned out pretty cool. Ultimately, the surface was a little bit uneven. I didn't want to go with it. This was another method where I spray painted down a nice coat of black on there and then uh, ended up spraying like a nice heavy coat of green and then blotting it up with the uh, white paper uh, crumpled up. I kind of got this technique from street uh, artists that do like the spray paint art. That's a technique that they use to create texture, but we end up going with a different process for paint. So next thing we need to do is just go ahead and get these clamped up in our jaws here. And I'm going to time lapse that so you guys don't have to watch it all. Back to the old time lapse. So I learned my lesson in the last video. I uh, ended up having it be way too long and, you know, they just don't need to, you know, there's a lot that we can cut out here and make it easier on you guys. Uh, so just using an angle grinder here with a cutoff disc and uh, rounding off the edges there. I do end up scrapping the, uh, the uh, bottle opener idea. I can, I can use a bottle opener. I, I, you know, I, honestly, I open my bottles with my ring on my finger. Uh, I just pop it off with that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and grind the taper down here on our little uh, prying end. I ended up taking the, the taper down a little bit too close to the end, and uh, I end up taking it back you know, a little bit more dull with a file. That's kind of a preference thing. I, I didn't want it cutting the th uh, stitching in my uh, pocket slip that I make for it uh, for the next video. Uh, so I ended up uh, doing that. I was thinking about possibly putting a uh, little edge on this edge. Also kind of do a half taper like that kind of just to give this point here nice for slicing. But you know what? I brought the point down pretty fine. It's It's visible anyway. It's not like actually, it's kind of hard to see here, but there is still some edge left there. So it's, it's, it's close enough where you could use it as a scraper. And uh, up here, I'm going to use an actual hand file to get the final shaping down. I think I'm going to skip the bottle opener. I mean, I could still use this to open a bottle without having the bottle opener on there, catching on stuff in my pocket and whatnot. So and I'd also like to keep the Stanley logo uh, on there as well. I don't know, just kind of like, you know, reminds you of where, you know, the fact that it was 
reclaimed or made from something else. You know, I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool. Um, so then the next thing I'm going to do here is uh, get the anvil out, heat this up, and get it nice and flat, or at least, I don't know, mostly flat anyway. I still want to have a little bit of a lever to it or, you know, pivot point to it, but not quite that much. So we'll get that done and then uh, do some finish sanding. So we have our uh, rough cutout shape here. What we're going to do is take a... Uh, well, flip it around this way. We're going to heat it up and uh, get it banged down so that it's pretty well straight. I'm not sure exactly the exact form that I'm going to want to go to. I'll I'll know that when I see it probably. Um, but I'm thinking maybe like half half as much angle from it as what we currently have. And then uh, once that's going, might just uh, keep the time lapse going and uh, take off uh, the rounded edges here. So. This part's probably pretty self-explanatory. I already explained it in the last bit there, but uh, just going to go ahead and try to get it as close to red hot as possible. With a propane torch like this in this setup, it's not the easiest thing. Uh, you'll see me uh, try to do a quench on it. That doesn't end up working. I end up having to uh, go about through traditional means. So uh, what that means is, uh, you know, getting a, a lump coal fire going with a uh, uh, a blower fan and getting it up to cherry red and until it's no longer magnetic and then quenching in oil. So that ends up working. I just used the horn there of the anvil to get that nice little, uh, just the ever so slightest amount of a bend in there just so I can use it for prying up on things. It ends up turning out really nice, kind of exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, not so much that it's hard to get in and out of the slick, but enough where you can pry with it. And here we are just using a little uh, chainsaw file just so that we can kind of make the notch in between the uh, fork of the pry end uh, tight enough where you can get in smaller uh, nails if you ever need to pry with that. It's not a real necessary feature. I don't plan on doing a lot of uh, prying with prying open uh, finishing nails, but if I were so inclined, I'd be able to do it with that. Uh, just using the file there, like I said before, to... Uh, Redull the end it was a little bit too sharp using a square there just to uh, make sure that the finished product of it is a uh, square on the end and the rounded corners look nice you know using a hand file to do that so i can do some precision work and just using uh using that to get the tapered ends you can see it here right uh yeah it's going pretty fast but just using that to round over everything all right guys so now that we got the uh main shaping done here on the Thing we're going to on the pry bar we're going to go ahead take a belt sander just knock this all flat make sure that this is nice and nice and smooth and uh then i'll probably do a heat treat off camera an actual heat treat and then we can get going on the painting so without further ado let's get this thing ground down looking a little bit nicer so just going to go ahead use the belt sander here and uh i don't use it for long because i end up uh catching a little bit of the edge of the uh edge of the prying in there that was pretty sharp and ripping a strip of it off and it started flipping around at high speed so it doesn't show it on the video but right around here is when we stop using it and just keep going completely with the file um and we're just going to go ahead and try and get all the everything leveled off pretty much from when you bang you know hit it with an anvil uh, and a hammer you know you get little divots and stuff in different places so we want to get all that down so that when we do our, our paint coat on here everything looks nice and flat it's not going to be perfect it is getting uh it's going to be getting it several coats of paint several layers of paint we're just ultimately looking to knock down the high spots so that everything looks nice and smooth and uh, the finished product is uh pretty much exactly what I was hoping for with that that aspect of everything so uh, that end of the file or the pry bar is going to be still hardened though all right, so that's close enough for what we're looking for here. And so we are, this here, this spot here is still hardened from when uh, it was hardened from the factory. So, but it feels perfectly smooth here. So it's close enough because I'm going to do a little wet sanding on the uh, paint after the first coat just to get everything, you know, smoothed down nicely. So that's enough where it will be indecipherable in the final product. So we are going to go from here and uh, just do a quick heat treat on it and then get it sanded back down to a proper temp. And I'll probably explain how we're going to do the heat treat during the voiceover for this whole process anyway. Um, so here we go. And then so the next step that you guys are going to see is going to be painting. Now that our heat treat is done, we're just going to do some uh, finished wet sanding. I did some off camera also. So just trying to get all the, the scale taken off of it and uh, get it to its finished product before we start the primer coat I'm using some 320 grit uh, wet sandpaper here just giving a, a nice little uh, pass on both sides we're just going to go ahead and 
give this a nice primer coat here and let it dry. All right, now to wait. I could be dishonest in this process and act like I did not rush it, but uh, and I could have hid my mistakes, but I did rush it just for the video purposes. If you're doing this for yourself, you should let every coat dry in between much better than I did. All right, so uh, we got this all painted. We're just going to do a little bit of a, a spritz on here and hit it with some uh, 320 grit uh, sandpaper just to get it ready for the final coat. If you can hear a baby crying in the background, no need to worry. Uh, we are trying to get our, our two-year-old, or well, one and a half-year-old, uh, off of uh, off of Binky. So uh, her mother's tending to that upstairs. Oops. All right, so, all right. So got that going there. Oh. All right, so we got our primer coat on here. I, you know what? Will you ravers get out of my friggin' basement for the love of God? Jeez, Lou. All right, uh, so we got our primer coat on here, and uh, what we're gonna do now is go ahead and bring in the. Uh, you open your basement up to one twenty-something year old, and all of a sudden you got these problems. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use our black spray paint. Uh, I don't know if I explained this already. If not, I'm gonna explain it again. Uh, we ditched the idea of using uh, the the two paint methods that we tried before, and we are, uh, you know, we were originally gonna go with the Hydro Dip. This is also another cool one. Maybe we'll use this on another project sometime. It does kind of look like granite, but we're not gonna use it here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down a nice base coat of black over the entire thing, and then we will spray uh, a tapered effect. I don't have the test piece to show you guys because it's upstairs, um, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, do that now, so we'll do a time lapse of that. Oh, no. All right, so here we have the black coated thing. I can you can see I was handling it a little bit, so there's some a little bit of uh, hand marks on it. But honestly, the finish turned out really nice. Like super glossy, or not glossy, but just smooth matte, nice. The only place that's a little bit off is right here next to the, where the screw was at that was holding it. All I did was for painting was did that like with a screw and then I hung it into a mason jar like that but on both sides. Uh, so now we are going to, and I don't know if I explained this yet, but we're going to spray this with the green and we're going to spray like from right here and just do like a tapered uh oh you'll see all right let's get this up a little bit closer for you guys you know what let me hold it back here so i don't spray through my hand again And that's ultimately what we're looking for there is like a gradient look is that cool i think that looks pretty cool and it's in focus okay so that's what we got going there and then we will let this dry well you know what maybe i can flip it over show uh, yeah. yeah all right i'll i'll flip it over and do it now and just get both of them done at once
It's about the same on both sides. Whoops. All right. So now I am just going to go ahead and let this dry like that. And then I'll show you guys when we're all done. All right. We have the finished product here. Well, pretty much finished product. This side looks good anyway. Um, so I ended up while I was, when I set it over there to dry, I used a squeeze clamp, one of these bad boys to uh, uh, hold it by the end here. Uh, Cause this was the side that was wet. And when I did that, it uh, took a little bit of the paint finish off because the spray paint wasn't done curing completely. I'm trying to get this video up by, by tomorrow, so I'm trying to uh, rush it along just a little bit. And I ended up uh, messing it up a little bit. Then I tried to hit it with just a touch of spray paint again, and I touched it before it was tacky. Long story short, let your spray paint dry all the way before you use it. But we're just going to use it here real quick as a ability to just give you a brief synopsis of what, you know, you guys know what you guys can use these for, but, uh, you know, use it for this, right? Yeah, see, it's it's taken off the finish. Wait, wait for yours to dry completely all the way uh, so that you don't have the same problem. It's not the end of the world. I might actually end up taking this finish off and applying a... Uh, metal bluing to it, uh, but you know, who knows? And there you go, get the nail pole out, and so, so that's what we're looking at for that. And uh, if I wasn't quite so impatient, it would be a much better reveal at the end here without the, the paint peeling up just a little bit there because I didn't give it time to dry, but that's okay. Uh, so we are currently in the process of building a uh, sheath for it. So if you're interested in taking a look at how that's done, uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, uh, hit that bell so that when the uh, sheath video or the uh, pocket slip video for this comes out, you'll be able to see how we did that. And if you made this, you can make that also to go along with it. Uh, but I'm really appreciative of you guys watching. Thank you so much. And uh, you guys have a great day.